Hi guys, it's uh, Jackie M from Masters of Malaysian Cuisine. I'm a little bit careful with my voice because I've <laughs> just about lost it. Um, <laughs> but uh, thank you so much for joining us. Make sure you say hello. Let us know where you're watching from. Uh, today we have our co-founder of Masters of Malaysian Cuisine, Paul Gray, with us. Paul is based in South Africa and he is going to be making. Paul, what are you making? I pretend like I know exactly what I'm making. I'm making Kwe Kara. Um, Kwe Kara. <laughs> damn it. <laughs> and I forgot I forgot what ostrich is in Malay all of a sudden, but I'm making it with ostrich. <laughs> okay, sure. Paul is making uh, kwe chara, which is a little chara. Malaysian, uh, little Malaysian cakes, right? They're savory usually, and instead of like the typical uh, kind of filling he's going to use, he's actually going to be using ostrich. Hey, how you doing? Just let me get rid of this error. Uh, Fakri, how are you? All right, guys, thank you so much again for joining us. Uh, say hello and let us know where you're watching from. I'm just going to play a quick clip from Tourism Malaysia and uh, we'll hop back on and speak a little bit more with Paul in 30 seconds. Truly Asia. Yeah, Malaysia Truly Asia. Apa khabar semua? Nama saya ialah Jackie M. Saya ialah salah seorang daripada chef dari kumpulan Masters of Malaysia Cuisine. And I am with Paul Gray. Paul is in South Africa near Johannesburg. How are you, Paul? Hey, hey, I'm good. Uh, <laughs> tired, but good. You know, I'm tired because I've been editing videos. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We have the finale, guys. So those of you who've been following, hello, Flora, how are you? Uh, we have been uh, working very hard to produce a series called Street Food Journeys, which is sponsored by Tourism Malaysia in Australia. And every week, uh, we hopefully, we get a little bit better with our editing. <laughs> I don't know if that's our work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but this weekend, this Sunday, we're going to air the finale of this particular series, and it's going to be on Sarawak. So we're very excited to bring that to you. Uh, Sarawak has been a challenge because most of our usual contributors uh, from West Malaysia and because of travel restrictions, they haven't been able to go to Sarawak to film anything for us. So we'll see how we go anyway. But thank you so much. Uh, great to have you guys. And like I said, if you are in our email list, you will have seen my notification today that Paul is going to make something he has never tried before. And it's actually called Kwe Chara. And in fact, for those of you who don't know, Paul, first of all, is our co-founder of MOMC. And second of all, he uh, has never tasted Malaysian food except what he has tried to cook himself sight unseen, you know, not knowing how it really should taste, using ingredients that he can only find in his part of South Africa, which sometimes can be a little bit limited. Um, so this is going to be interesting. Uh, so Paul, Kwe Chara, what are the ingredients that you, uh, you've got on hand today? Okay, so I basically got almost everything that is required to do this. Um, I just decided to change the chicken to ostrich because, you know, South Africa knows it somewhat. Um, what we have here, let me just tilt the camera down. Sure. Okay, let me so. The camera, by the way, you can still hear me, but let me just remove myself from screen. Okay. Sorry, Paul. Okay. okay, so keeping it pretty simple, um, we'll start with the garnish. So we're going to have some bird's eyes some garlic chives and then when it comes to the actual um cake i think was probably the best word to, to use we have flour um then we have turmeric powder to make it yellow i've also got food coloring i've also got fresh turmeric but you know what i just decided um <laughs> that's what i'm going to do uh then i am going to be using uh, chicken powder instead of salt just because. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, white pepper and uh -huh. obviously eggs to bind it. Okay. Um, then on the other hand, we have the sort of like a little bit of the curry and that's going to be onions, curry powder, 
a little bit of ginger. And hold on, guys. Let me just check there. Do you have garlic? Oh, yeah. I do have garlic, and I should probably get it out. Okay. So, um, I'm doing that. Let me just, for those of you who don't know what Quechara is, uh, this recipe is actually based on a recipe that I acquired from my trip to Kelantan. Okay. So this is what Quechara looks like. I hope you guys can see this. Right. So this is the beautiful Quechara. I, I so had the. Uh, opportunity to eat and also to uh, cook in Kelantan during my trip there, courtesy of Tourism Malaysia a few years ago. Um, but hopefully, Paul, uh, now that you've seen what it looks like, <laughs> you will be able to achieve something that isn't too far removed from that. Okay, back to you. I was literally just about to say, that's a really good picture. Mine's not going to look anything like that. <laughs> Come on, you don't know that. Let's see, let's see. Okay, well, for starters, I don't have molds that are that good. I have very simple, just like mini muffin tin mold. I think that'll be good. Um, yeah, well, let's find out. And then before we get into any of that is... Let's make the batter, then we're going to make the curry stuff, and then we're going to assemble and put it in the oven. I'm not going to do it on the stove top because that's kind of awkward to like balance on a gas stove and stuff. So yeah, I'm going to get going. Let me tilt this down so you guys can see me do my thing. Personally, and, uh, I can actually make the curry ingredients first because you need to cook up the curry and let it cool down a little bit while you make the batter. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah. So do the curry first. You but, know better uh, than I. Yeah. Uh, that's definitely how I would do it. The curry, for those of you who don't know, the Quechara, like I said, they're like little cakes. They're pretty simple, like flour and egg cakes, uh, but they have a filling that, like, you know, that you put on top of them when you put them in the oven. So the filling in this particular instance is going to be cool, like a dry style kind of curry. The original recipe, and we will actually share the recipe with you guys, but don't forget to sign up at malaysianchefs.com slash join today. We send out all our recipes to you guys directly when we get a hold of them. And also, at this point, we are in the process of moving our membership area to a different system, but we will keep everyone posted. But in the meantime, we are emailing everyone our recipes as we edit them, okay? may take a couple of weeks, but you will get them eventually. So make sure, if you haven't already signed up, to go to malaysianchefs.com slash join today. Um, but yeah, my original recipe, courtesy of uh, our trip to Kelantan, used uh, chicken mince, okay? Paul's uh, ostrich are uh, ostrich steaks, so he's gonna cut them into small pieces and he's going to cook it up into a curry. So yeah, anyway, Paul, go on. Yeah, nice and simple. Um, just literally going to Handle all the ingredients. Um, with the ostrich itself, I think it would be easier if I sort of, um, I want to use the word dice, but you know, just thinly slice it and then cut it a little shorter. Um, you know, because the thing is, particularly with this, and it's going to go into some sort of a batter, I just can't see big pieces going yeah. nicely with it. Yeah, yeah, that's no, right. I need to be a small um, a piece as possible. Uh, what does ostrich taste like? Has anyone tasted ostrich before? Let me know. I was going to say, let me describe it after someone in the comments has said anything, of which I don't see anyone. <laughs> um, okay, so ostrich tastes like a more, the thing is, this isn't doing it justice, but I want to say a more metallic beef. You know, if you've ever tasted like bison or some sort of working animal, you know, uh -huh. something that does a lot of work, that's the taste it sort of has. You know, uh -huh. it's closer to it's closer to beef than it is to um, chicken. Chicken, yeah. It's not even close. I mean, have a look. I mean, you can tell from the the coloring. Okay. Like, okay. Which cuts of the, is that like a thigh meat, like dark meat, or is it like the the, the breast part? The, the whole thing is the same, you know. So this this is more of a fillet cut, you know, in terms of if you had to look at it with the anatomy of a chicken, it's more of the fillet. Um, but if you comparing it to what is it like in terms okay. of another kind of meat, I would say it's like a tenderloin cut. Okay, Lisa says that she's tried the eggs but not the meat. And it's funny when I shared in our WhatsApp group 
uh, our Michelin chef, Rene Jufi, actually thought you were using ostrich eggs. Because <laughs> yeah. it seems like ostrich eggs are popular, but ostrich meat probably is a little bit more exotic. It's a difference in South Africa. Everyone loves the meat here, but getting the eggs is not as easy as you'd think. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. And by the way, uh, just a shout out to everyone who said hello. Make sure you guys say hello. Let us know where you're watching from. So we had Fakri earlier. We had Flora watching from Turas in Kuala Lumpur. Ragini in, uh, from Salayang in Malaysia. Jit is watching from Auckland, New Zealand. Uh, we have someone from Twitch, my old Twitch community. And we have Lisa Yeo, of course, watching from Germany. So as always with the, our MOMC broadcasts, our audience is very international. So thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in. Yeah, and I was going to say, you know what's funny, though, is when Rene said that this morning, I was like, what does he think? I'm making tartlets for like 30 people. Because I think one ostrich egg is about 28 normal eggs, I think, supposedly. Really? I had no idea. Or wow. 24 or something. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That's just too much egg even for you, Paul. <laughs> Paul eats like, eight, uh, six eggs every morning for his egg omelette. So, <laughs> but that's like, oh, I have never, I've never tried it. <laughs> yeah, it's. I don't know. It's. Um, I'm trying to think. I, I don't know when was the last time I had it, but it's like it's stronger tasting than chicken. Okay. Cool. Cool. Mm, if that makes any sense. Uh, Risking saying hello from Malaysia. How are you? Great to see Thanks for tuning in. Um, do, you, do you usually just grill it like steak, Paul, or how do you usually cook sausage? Yeah, I usually cook it like a steak. So, funny thing is, if you, depending on obviously your tastes, but let's say you like a medium rare steak, uh -huh. you would like your ostrich rare. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's, Why is that? It's I honestly I don't know. I just I remember someone a prof, like a, I think it was a cook once telling me that. And what it does is, in terms of the flavor, you know, you don't need to cook it as much for it to be the same sort of texture. Okay. So like a rare ostrich is more like a medium rare steak, you know, because oh, the thing is it's very yeah it's very lean, so you don't get okay. a lot of. Um, fat to cook it in so if you overcook ostrich and i i have done that before it okay. is not great <laughs> okay uh june is saying hello from victoria how are you june um I'm, I'm, I'm curious to know if ostrich tastes like emu here in australia we have emu meat but i don't know if i've actually even had emu before but i'll, I, I'll tell you know. when i come over <laughs> <laughs> but uh here in australia like uh yeah, Lisa is asking, has it got a certain smell? Like duck, it smells different. Yeah, duck has that gamey, slightly gamey kind of like vibe, right? It's ostrich. It smells, like ostrich smells like... Oof, that's a tricky one to answer. Um, it smells more like red meat, though. So it's like... Um, Okay. It's sort of steaky. I want to say it's closer to kudu, but then again, if you don't know what ostrich smells like, you certainly won't know what kudu smells like. What is kudu um, again? It's uh, buck. Buck. Okay. Yeah, that's a really big uh, clove right there. Nice. <laughs> um, kudu is, you can Google it and put it on the screen if you want, but it's like, um, it's the second biggest buck to begin in South Africa. Okay. When you say kudu, I think of kuda, which in Malay means horse. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, it might be close to horse meat. I don't know. Not from personal experience, at least. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it's... Um, do, do they eat horse meat in South Africa, by the way? No, it's not a thing. Maybe, like, sort of more rurally, but it's not really... Okay. In Europe, thing. apparently, it's pretty common to eat horse meat. I've heard so. And I saw a friend on Facebook share that he went to a restaurant and uh -huh. had uh, zebra. So I was like, well, oh, that's close wow. enough, I guess. Okay, that's a little bit. Okay. 
I mean, in Australia, there was actually a big scandal like years ago about like horse meat being used, uh, being passed off as something else here in Australia because they were imported from Europe and people got really upset because uh, Australia, Australians like Anglos, you know, Anglo-Saxons. <laughs> <laughs> But people of Anglo-Saxon like um, heritage descent. Uh, uh, descent have very, uh, I guess, uh, you know, have a, a certain relationship with horses, right? Like they're kind of like companion animals. But apparently they don't have that in, in, in certain parts of Europe where they use them as meat. So, um, so there was a scandal when it was uncovered that like a lot of the meat that coming in from Europe, I, don't, I guess maybe in like burger patties or whatever, were actually horse meat. So I actually got into a, on, 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 yeah. on Australian television about it, whether at the time I had a restaurant, they were asking me, or how would I feel, you know, if I found out that I was using horse meat? And I say, like, the issue isn't the whole, um, uh, the issue isn't so much that it was horse meat, but it was that there was deceptive practice involved in trying to pass off horse meat as something else. Um, yeah, well, so... The the biggest problem that comes around is sort of like our cultural constructions of things. Yeah. You know, the, the only reason you think horse, you're like, oh, geez, horse is because, you know, it's something we haven't really eaten in our past, yeah. or at least I mean, yeah. from an Anglo-Saxon point of view. Um, yeah. And that's literally the only reason why people are like, or like, you know, <laughs> sort of uh, antsy about eating certain types of meat and food. Yeah. June, June is saying ostrich eggs taste buttery and richer. That's yeah, that's, that's now the best way to describe it. it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Actually, I was, uh, the thing is, I haven't had duck eggs, so maybe ostrich is similar to duck. Yeah, yeah. Uh, June says uh, she's had horse meat and cooked well. It tastes fantastic. It's what your culture is used to right on. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know but how far you know <laughs> I was, well what we it's funny enough you mentioned that we got a restaurant I don't want to say down the road but uh -huh. if anyone follows my YouTube channel the adventure bros one of the hikes we went on just down the road from it there's a place that um it's called carnival funny enough and they serve it's not a vegetarian restaurant, obviously. <laughs> what, what gave it away? <laughs> <laughs> Rosita Heile is saying hello from Frankfurt, Germany, Paul. Hey, Rosita. How's it going? <laughs> how's things in Germany? Eat any horses lately? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry. What were you saying about carnival restaurants? Yeah, so we have this restaurant called Carnival. And basically what they do is it's a... Um, not buffet, but you know, they bring food around to you and you choose what you want. Oh, yeah. yeah. And all of that. And so they have a range of meats from crocodile to warthog to oh, wow. all the different bucks that we have. Oh, wow. Um, and then I'm trying to think what else, what else. But yeah, you know, you, you think it, it's on the menu there type of thing. Right, right. And, um, oh, those aren't bad. Yeah, I enjoy those. Um, I, I, I'm wondering if people are able to watch us on um, the MOMC channel. Just let me, guys, if you hear some weird noises, just excuse me for a second because I'm getting an error with the broadcast. But anyway, well, sorry, what was that? Okay, now you can tell me when you unmute up. Just yeah, you, I'm just, I'm just looking. Yeah, you, can, you can keep talking while I check on the technical issues behind us. Okay. Uh, okay, you guys can see the walk all good. It looks like it's playing on all of the different channels. I just quickly ran across, but yeah, the views are quite low, so I'm not sure. Maybe that might be related. Okay, no, it does. It is working. Uh, Lisa, you're saying we don't eat that. I have never seen neither horse nor ostrich here. <laughs> Well, that's kind of boring. <laughs> <laughs> you need to go to South Africa. <laughs> Sorry, Paul. <laughs> God. <laughs> yeah. No, I was going to say, the thing is, I'm quite the adventurous eater. I don't have many things that are uh, off limits for me. Yeah. 
Oh, no, Ruth, you can say in Paris there was this restaurant that specializes in horse meat but never tried ostrich meat. Try alligator sausage in LA one, taste it like chicken. <laughs> Everything tastes like chicken. <laughs> Croc Crocodile tastes like chicken, you know? Yeah. So beat me. <laughs> um, yeah, I was going to say, like, I'm quite adventurous when it comes to these things. So, you know, I do enjoy trying different stuff. Like, I went to a carnival restaurant, I ate everything there. Uh, to the dismay of most vegans, I'm guessing, uh, I enjoy most meats. <laughs> And, um, yeah, yeah, even even vegetables. Like, I mean, I'd eat almost anything. Like those yeah. worms, like I told you earlier, when we were looking at the Sarawak thing, I'd eat those worms. Oh, no. <laughs> I was just saying, yes, we do have emu here in Australia. Have, has anyone tried emu? And I wonder if it tastes the same as ostrich. But, yeah, we were, like I said, guys, uh, this coming Sunday is the finale of our first series of Street Food Journey, and it's going to be on Sarawak. So Paul and I have been working on our Sarawak content, and if you know anything about Sarawak, you know one of their, uh, I guess, delicacies are these big, fat grubs. That's just, I, I have a phobia about, like, creepy crawlies, about caterpillars and stuff, and I don't know if anyone's actually tried it. Paul says he would try it. Uh, I, I, yeah. It's a deal breaker for me. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say we have um, mopani worms in South Africa. It, it's one of those things that everyone comes and tries. You know, they come here. They have to go to, like a cultural village and try mopani worms. Not me. <laughs> do they eat them uh, raw or alive, or do they eat them? In There's the multiple food? ways. But okay. when they try it, like in a cultural village thing, it's like raw. Oh no, I'm out. <laughs> Has anyone eaten worms before? Let us know. <laughs> I mean, I've been, I've had them. They're not bad. They're not um, much, to be honest. Yeah. There's really not much to them. It's not like mm, this really has some flavour. It's just <laughs> it is. You know, it's like old thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like one day when cricket takes over, it's going to be the same thing. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah, yeah. The, um, so, Paul, how much did that uh, ostrich cost? Is it expensive or is it cheap? Uh, it's actually cheaper than beef. Um, okay. This one cost about, what was that, 80 rand there for 500? So, about 160 rand a kilogram, so about 12 to 15 Aussie dollars. Okay, right. Um, but that's kind of pricey. You can get it for about eight to ten Aussie dollars if you go to the right place. This one's just expensive. <laughs> uh, Lisa is saying, I was living in Bangkok. I dare not try those creepy crawlies. Yeah, yeah, I know, right? That's the thing. Like, except for Sarawak, I always tell people, oh, we Malaysians, we don't eat all the, all, all the strange stuff. And then, except for Sarawak. <laughs> Yeah, but they're not, but they're different. Yeah. They're like separate. Yeah, yeah. Sarawak is almost like its own. Sarawak has its like own very distinct identity because it's on a different landmass to the rest of Malaysia. Uh, people are different. Their, their ethnic backgrounds are different, and all that. Their culture, their food, and all that. It's very different. But yeah, every time people stereotype, uh, I guess, Asians as you know, people who eat weird stuff and all that. I was like, no, no, we Malaysians, we, we don't do that. And then I'm thinking about, I'm just doing Sarawak. <laughs> but I mean, like, Borneo is known for those things, you know? Yeah, like yeah, yeah. watch programs like Borneo, let's go eat some weird stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The, uh, so uh, look at the meat there, though. Yeah, it's got no fat on it at all. It's very lean. That's interesting. Yeah. You know, I wonder if you could use it to make rendang or something like that. Like whether it was rendang. What kind of meat do you use for rendang? Well, usually beef. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, like a fatty cut or a. No, no. I I actually use a, like the sinewy cut, like what we call gravy beef here in Australia, or or, or brisket or something like that. Something that requires long, slow cooking. Um, but Aussies generally like their meat really lean, so um, yeah, or maybe. Oh, like, probably... Do you ever cook yeah. this in 
do or something like that? Yeah. So it's better to get the the other cuts of ostrich, which are okay. quite, I assume closer to the thigh. They don't really tell you okay, sure. what these are. How interesting. But, um, yeah, so you get like when you get in the grocery store, you get ostrich fillet, ostrich steak, which is this. Um, right. Ostrich uh, neck. Yeah, yeah, neck. Obviously, the neck's a big thing. So that's good. It's almost like a replacement for oxtail. Yeah. Oh, sure, sure. And then you get like a roast, which I assume must be the leg or something. Can you get it on the bone and then use like make stock with it or is it all fillet? Then you might as well just use the neck. Yeah, the neck would be best like yeah. or on the bone. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in terms of the meat, the rest of it, I mean, it's boneless. Okay. Hmm. I haven't really questioned where or how it came to exist. So. Yeah. I just eat it. That's like a lot of onion that you're frying up, Paul, by the way. Yeah, I'm going to take half of it out later because <laughs> I looked at it and I was like, wow. <laughs> they look like pretty big chunks too, actually. Like yeah, you, you're making curry, like we would actually process the onion into a paste sort of thing. I was going to do that. And then I was like, nah, this will be fine. We'll cook down. But you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to chuck it in the blender. You know. Okay. Okay. But I'll, I just want to get everything in first. Okay, sure. And I'll bring it back. Yeah. And what just I would cut do, it. Yeah. Like once yeah. you put your steak into small enough pieces, I would just drench them with the curry powder. Okay. Gives them a more curry flavor, I guess. Yeah. And that's a good way for me to gauge how much curry powder to use, because if you're Malaysian and you cook like me, everything is agar agar. We don't measure <laughs> it. But like um, how much curry powder you use, you kind of like eyeball it to some extent. You you drench it and you make sure it's well tossed in curry powder and then right. I think that's also enough meat. Like I'm just looking at it, it's going to be a lot. Yeah, yeah, I think so. And um, with the curry powder, if you've watched Paul's previous session, like this curry powder he buys from Johannesburg, Chinatown, and it doesn't smell like here yeah, in Malaysia. We're so, well, here in Malaysia, here in Australia, we're really yeah. you can get like Malaysian curry powders in all kinds of different forms. You get like Malaysian. Fish curry powder, meat curry powder, rendang curry powder, all those kinds of stuff. But in South Africa, like, he just gets this generic curry powder um, and that's it sort of thing. So hopefully it's decent. But for what it's worth, this curry powder, apparently the spices are mixed at this Thai grocery store in Johannesburg. So he's hoping that because the owners are Thai, that maybe the flavors might be close to Malaysian curry powder. I don't know. <laughs> I was gonna say I have no clue going to a Thai grocery store and getting like dry curry powder. Like I don't know how that works. <laughs> Let me just pop all of this in there. Uh, yeah, so let's just see. There are some comments. How long does it take to cook the ostrich? So the ostrich, depending on what you want to cook, you will get, um, let me try to think, you know, a steak, you know, six minutes in total will do the trick. If you know you want it rare, medium rare. Um, and then if you want to do something more like, you know, slow cooking, like the neck, or you want to chuck this into something else, I'd say at least two hours onwards. Wow. So, yeah, cool. it's, it's, it's very similar to beef. Cool. You know? I'm going to mute myself for a couple of minutes um, because I've got Noah. There's Noah here. Yeah, he's just on his way cool, up. Cool. Yes. Okay, we'll catch you now. Mm. Yeah, and in terms of this curry powder, like, I mean, I don't know if you guys, like, it looks like any curry powder you've ever seen before. But um, from my experience, the fact that it's from a tar shop, it's strange that it's dry. 
So that's why I'm like I feel like it could be Malaysian. Um, but on the other hand, it's um, yeah, because it doesn't have that sort of Indian or Bangladeshi smell either. So uh, I don't know. <laughs> it could be anything really. Okay, so what we're gonna do, I don't know if you can see, yeah, okay, you can still see nicely, is we're gonna add some of the curry powder into it. Uh, and then I'm gonna also chop up the ginger, just a little bit, because it's already on the beef. I just wanna make sure there's enough. Yeah, I'm gonna do this, let me just clean my knife. Mm. Let's take this piece over here. Uh, ah, oh, finally another South African. Hi, Nazreen. How's it going? Uh, is it cold and uh, rainy and all that nonsense in Cape Town? I feel so bad for you guys because it's nice and warm here again. Because we had like a two-week bout of weather that really uh, they have nothing to the imagination, although I'm sure the Europeans would be jealous of that weather. But I was dying, so I, I feel bad that you guys are having cold weather. But also, on the other hand, that means that we're going to get cold weather again soon. So, <laughs> yeah, it's never a good sign when Cape Town gets cold. Okay, so I already put a little bit of garlic and ginger into the what I was cooking up, but I think I'm going to add just a little more. Um, just to make sure that we got enough of the flavor going. And then, um, what else we got here? The weather reminds you of Malaysia. I will tell you when I finally get to Malaysia. So we will see how that goes. <laughs> um, actually, I don't know, Nazreen, um, where in Malaysia are you originally from? I thought you were South African, born and bred, or are you... Or do you have relatives in Malaysia? Oh, the constant drizzle. <laughs> okay, I'll be back in a second. Listen for the blender. This will be a good consistency for the little quays. There you go. Let's bring this back on. Oh, wait. I just forgot that I did that. The one thing I like about these little stoves is that they're portable. But the one thing I don't like about them is the fact that the weird gas bottle thing, you always have to, like, clip on or who knows what. So, oh, <laughs> you can hear I'm back. I'm back on. I've got no. Yeah, no, I was gonna say. I, I was gonna say. I thought Noah took over. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> around the show. People are wondering, like, if you hear some robotic noises, because I've got a special needs son who can't speak, so he uses a communication um, uh, machine to communicate that verbalizes his requests for him. So. Um, yeah, but uh, particularly Nasreen, Ross. Nasreen saying hello, but I heard you guys were talking anyway. Let me remove my server and let you keep going. Okay, oh, yeah, yeah, so you are from Cape Town. Okay, um, that's cool. Um, I enjoy Cape Town. Um, I, I, I like the look of Cape Town more than sort of my social interactions I've had there. Um, but maybe I just haven't had enough social interactions <laughs> um but yeah cape town's great in terms of food uh, places to visit trying to think of the things that are the best about cape town so i mean there's a variety of different tastes and flavors and uh, you know people with different types of flavors so that's the best thing about cape town 
Uh, also, obviously, there's a lot to do with nature and the sea. Like, if you enjoy picturesque places, I don't know if there's anywhere better than Cape Town. Your ancestors are from Malay Archipelago. My mom is from Malacca. And as far as I can ascertain, that's cool. Yeah, Malacca is always a good time, the original state. <laughs> um, what did you say there? What's not to like about Cape Town? Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> you know, the thing is, this might upset some people, but I've, uh, as I was trying to explain this, the people from uh, Cape Town are not exactly my uh, cup of tea. I'm not saying the people are bad. It's just a different wavelength, you know. Um, from what I can ascertain, that if I had to compare it to Malaysia, is uh, Cape Town is the Penang of South Africa. <laughs> from what I've uh, worked out and through speaking with Liam and whatever. So... Uh, what, when I eventually visit, I'll be able to give you a, a better comparison. <laughs> um, yeah, no, like, oh, so do you live in, um, oh, what's the name of the area now? You know, with all the colorful houses. Um, oh, the name slips my mind. But is that where, where you stay? Um, oh, it's on the tip of my tongue now. Um, but that's really cool. Um, I feel like I really need to do a Cape Malay uh, tour, though, and try all the foods in Cape Town. Okay, so let's let this cook away a bit. I think I need to turn the heat up a little. Yeah, turn the heat up, Paul. <laughs> yeah, can you see it? Like I'm stirring something that's barely <laughs> cooking. I, 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 <laughs> it feels to me like you need a more powerful stove or you need to, to refill your little gas canister. So the, um, I would personally add a little bit more oil to it too. I, think I did just I, add, but okay. I've, I've come to realize that you're very averse to using oil in your cooking. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I always, you know, less is more type of thing in my argument. I was born in... Oh, yeah, Burkop. Oh, yeah, the name was slipping my tongue. Um, that's really cool. I hope Jackie is happy, happy with the amount of oil that's in here now. Uh, it's getting there. Okay, okay, if that's how it is. <laughs> Also, I suppose I turn this thing up. So having more oil helps it to cook faster as well. Mm. It helps it to cook more evenly. Okay, that makes sense. Mm. You've seen our chef, our chef Bob and all those, how much oil they put in their cooking, right? That's, yeah, the kind that's of a thing. lot. That's yeah, like you going that's swimming. How you're supposed, <laughs> <laughs> how you're supposed to just... cook your temper. That is true. Have you added your meat yet? You can add it now if you haven't. Okay. This really feels like it's too cool. But I know yeah, this thing has power, so... Let's let it... It's easier when you're cooking, like, uh, more Chinese things, because then you just let it sit till it smokes. You know, when you're cooking like a, a powder, oh, sorry, um, a paste up from scratch, it's sort of like hard to gauge how hot it is. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it looks like it's, um, it looks like you shouldn't be stirring it so much because it's... it's I didn't stir nothing. You, you didn't say stir. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, well, while we let it sit and do its thing, I am going to make the batter. Yeah. Should I sieve it or no? What's best? Well, no, just <laughs> throw everything <laughs> in. So I got I got also applies to baking. I see. 
Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, so we're going to start with two. I'm just going to do two cups of flour, like 500 grams. I mean, it's going to be hard to work that out. For those of you who are just tuning in, we are making uh, well, corn is making fish. <laughs> it's uh, based on this recipe that I obtained in Kelantan from my trip over there, from uh, a few years ago, from courtesy of Tourism Malaysia in Kelantan. And Kelantan is up in the northern part of the peninsula of Malaysia, and the food is very unique. And let me see if I can pull up the picture again for those of you who missed uh, what it was like originally. The screen. Okay, if you can see that, that's Kwechara, those are the beautiful yellow colored savory cakes. To which I reply. To make without ever having seen <laughs> it before. So there you go. So sharing. I was going to say, without. Um... Without seeing that picture, I could fake that whatever it is I was going to do would be good. But having uh -huh. seen that picture. Yeah. <laughs> no pressure, Paul. So you're using just regular plain flour and you've added some yeah. pepper and what else? Salt, pepper, well, chicken powder. Okay. And uh, now three cups of water are coming along. Okay. I think uh, this is coming along nicely. I think I'm going to turn it off. Yeah, once it's cooked, have you seasoned the, the meat though? Like, have you added like season, like flavoring in there? Yeah, I added chicken powder into the... Okay, okay. Uh, what's his name? Cool, cool. That should do it. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Uh, okay, three cups of water. Just going to go to the sink. This is getting disastrously if I don't. <laughs> Mm. Oh. I'm going to add two cups and I'll hold the third one just in case. Yeah, yeah. It's be too runny. Add, add the uh, eggs first, personally, because you want to first thing you gauge how much water you need. <laughs> Funny story. What? I already added the water. <laughs> mm -hmm, I saw. <laughs> Do I look like much of a rule follower? Hmm. Actually, make life a little bit easier for everybody in the band because we're not going to use you again. What I found back in the day when I used to teach um, cooking lessons, I, I, I tended to find that men were such sticklers for measuring everything to the nth degree. And women were more chill. Like, you know, women were more... Um, more easy to coerce into using the aga aga estimating method of measuring. Whoops. <laughs> um, yeah, but the thing is, I think find that men are very like precision driven. I yeah. don't really subscribe to that philosophy. Um, uh -huh. But sometimes I just like, you know, it's easier just to measure things out than to eyeball it. Yeah. Okay, we survived. Cool. Okay, who here has tried Kwechara? Siapa di sini ada pernah buat Kwechara? I rasa I still deepen tak pernah buat. I'm just kind of like telling you how to do it without knowing how to do it, without having ever made it myself. But to be <laughs> fair, it's a very simple recipe from what I can see. Yeah, I... I mean, not really much of a baker, but, you know, yeah. it looks as easy as it gets. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm not a baker either, so that's why I've never really made it. 
So you've only added two cups of water so far, right? Yeah, and if we look at it. Yeah, it looks quite runny already. Yeah, I don't think any more water. Maybe a touch more. Uh, I'm worried it's gonna be like pancake batter. Okay. Thickness. Also, what what is a rising agent in this? Is there a rising agent in this? No, there isn't any. If you've got so baking powder, you can put some baking powder in it. I don't want to go against the the recipe. <laughs> I'm just I'm just thinking that like you know it's going to stay the size of the tart can the tart um, thing if we don't add anything to make it rise. <laughs> Who here has watched our, uh, has been following our Street Food Journey series? And if you have, which one's your favorite episode so far? Tell us in the comments. I think my favorite episode hmm, has to be, I'm going to upset a few people here, Kada. <laughs> I, I think that's my favorite too. You know why though? It's because there was just such good content and footage. And I mean, who doesn't want to eat a meal in a river? Okay, so it's time to dish up. Oh wait, hold on. We're forgetting a very important thing. Does anyone notice what we're forgetting? Yes, that is it. Turmeric powder. <laughs> uh huh. Uh, look, Nazreen says kada too. There you go. That's okay. a lot of powder, baby. <laughs> you know I, what? I, you you I, you can add a little bit more um, uh, water to this, but I personally, mm -hmm. yeah, okay. Um, I like this consistency. Okay. Let me let That's me just actually do a share screen with everyone here. And like I said, if you're just tuning in, you're wondering what that noise in the background is. It's my son, though, what he can't see. So he uses a, uh, a, a communication device to ask for stuff. So just bear with me for a second. But while Paul is um, reading that, I'm going to show you guys, okay, the, 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 the version that they made in Kelantan, which you guys are going to see hopefully soon because... Mm. Uh, Big announcement, uh, Tourism Malaysia would like us to keep making street food journeys. Isn't that exciting? Okay, just let me do a share screen and let me show you. Uh, let me, uh, I hope this works properly. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Can you see it, Paul? Yeah, I can see it nicely. The thing is, I like those little containers that they have. Yeah. Wish we could get them here. Yeah. Maybe in the Malay Quarter you can get it. Now Sri might be able to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Next time I go to Cape Town, which hopefully won't be too long. Okay. So I'll screen share. <laughs> How yellow is that now? Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, it yeah, doesn't look okay. that yellow on screen though. On screen, it still looks like it's regular. Okay. okay. But yeah. Did, okay, so. Yeah, I was gonna ask you whether you needed to grease your muffin pan, but I guess it's not. I already non did. Okay. Well, there you go. Yeah, uh, it is non-stick, but I just, I greased it yesterday or this morning, yesterday, okay. in any case, just to make sure. Sure. I don't so want to be I, one of those awkward situations. Yeah. What I'll do is actually um, put some of the batter on, cook it for a bit, mm. take it out, and then add the topping in, and then cook it some more. Okay. If you guys saw the clip just then from the Kalantan cooking session, of uh, Kwechara, they cook it on a stove top, but they use these special molds that have lids on them. Yeah. Nasreen is inviting you to go to uh, check out the food scene. Cool. I will definitely take you up on that offer when I get down there. My sister is going to be in Cape Town, or oh, well, not 
Cape Town, Muscle Bay. Um, next week, I guess. <laughs> Any problem? Yeah, but the thing is, you probably fly into Cape Town. Yeah, let me just mute myself as of Noah. Okay. Uh, I feel like I'd love to have one of those machines because I could also get like <laughs> or coerce Jackie into giving me a lot of food. Like, I mean, who wouldn't want to get a lot of food from Jackie? <laughs> Okay, so here we are. Um, I should probably have not thrown away the glove. Let's keep the glove on hand. I'm going to be using the inside ones just so that it fits nicer. And I guess 12, yeah, 12 should be a good amount. I think it'd be really cool making these on the stovetop. Like, I mean, sure, oven's easy and stuff, but it doesn't have the same visual appeal that you get out of a stovetop cooking thing. And I think I might have actually overfilled these, but hey, YOLO, just go with it. <laughs> Okay. Wow. <laughs> do, you think I, do you think I've overfilled them a bit? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Nasreen. Yeah, I'll let you know if she's going to Cape Town. I'm not sure yet. I know she's going to Muscle Bay. Um, <laughs> all right, I'm going to contact you. <laughs> Maybe you and you and uh, my sister and Paul can hang out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there we go. Oh, cool. all right. So, what do you think, guys? You think it's going to turn out? <laughs> can I vote? <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, how hot is the oven? Uh, 180 degrees. Okay, decent, decent. All right, stick it in for five minutes and then take it out and then add the filling. If it's too cooked, I'm not going to be happy. <laughs> you, yeah, that's true. Did you already uh, chop up your uh, chives already? No, I'm going to do that now while we're waiting. Okay, cool. Do something to keep us busy. Yeah, this uh, has gone on longer than I expected it would take to make a snack. <laughs> I knew it too. when I saw that you hadn't already diced um, the, the the ostrich, I knew it was going to run over time. <laughs> I didn't want to say anything. One of these days, I will show you how to be a, a efficient chef. <laughs> <laughs> you can show me as many times as you want, doesn't mean I'm going to follow it. <laughs> well. Uh-huh. Could be consequences. True. Uh -huh. <laughs> I must say chili always adds a nice color, especially on top of things. Uh huh. Yeah, I agree. Did you, did you stick your muffin pan in the oven, or did you just like? Is it, was it cold? It, it was warm. It was preheated. Oh, okay. okay, sure. That's also why I wasn't so worried about oiling it. Okay. But it was already oiled, so. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's like a walk. I always like to oil it after I've like cleaned it or whatever. Okay. Because sure. you don't have to worry so much for the next use. Okay. Because you, you don't season your walks really, do you? I don't. Because, yeah. Because yeah. I don't have the luxury of like all these, <laughs> all these fancy YouTubers who like to shoot sh videos on how to season your walk. <laughs> I just I, I cook for a, I cook for a business, you know. I, I cook like 
Oh my goodness, back in the day. You do it every like, time. Yeah, I, I, I cook easily like 40 kilos or 60 kilos of rice noodles but then, like an hour, hour and a half sort of thing. So when I buy a brand new wok, by the end of that hour and a half, it's perfectly seasoned without me having to. I was going to say, if you're going to cook 40 kilograms of noodles, it's going to be seasoned by the end of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I find that like I always just sort of lightly season it after I've cleaned it. So you know, I just chuck some oil in, get it to start smoking, whirl it around, clean it out. You know, pour the excess out, and it seems to make a difference because okay. I never did that from the start. Okay. I'm at an angle. <laughs> I don't know how this thing dipped. That's cool. Okay. So yeah. check, why don't you check on your Quechara? I would take it out now. I'll pretend like I'm not I, I, I got king, but then all of a sudden I looked up and realized I had, do have a timer on. Uh-huh. Uh, actually, this might just be perfect. <laughs> Let me show you. Yeah. I don't, can you see on, yeah, on yeah. the camera how it's like, okay. Uh, I'm gonna just, so you guys can also see this. I'm gonna do that. <laughs> just as well I spoke up in time otherwise it would have been cooked all the way and you wouldn't be able to stuff it in <laughs> the time is almost ready to go so we're good to go how's that can you see me putting them in yeah 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 so is it just one chunk of meat in each one <laughs> yeah because that's how big they are yeah that's Paul's way what can I say? Uh -huh. Hey, you know, I'm, I'm creating a new dish here. <laughs> Quechara steak. <laughs> <laughs> that is exactly what it is. Uh -huh. Although that one's a little smaller. So we got like a little bit of liquid yeah. and stuff. There we go. I don't. You, you don't think I need to top these up, do you? Just like this? No, just like that. That would be all right, I think. Oh, you can. Um, how how full are they? Like about three quarters way. Oh yeah, you can't really see on the the thing, can you? Yeah. Actually, this curry tastes pretty good. Of course it does. <laughs> well, I totally bastardized it, so. That's all you need. People like, uh, I think people, uh, you know, that curry filling that Paul made is the basically the same filling you can use for curry puffs and like for multibut filling and all that sort of stuff. It's not that complicated. I, I wouldn't put that much in Paul because you want to be able to see a bit of the meat. You want to still be able to see the meat? Yeah, poking through. Okay. You know, there well, are some that's like tablespoons or something you can use you know instead of big giant ladles but it looks cool and i just got this yesterday so i wanted to use it <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> okay what does everyone think <laughs> uh, it'll do <laughs> that's what everyone thinks oh. okay um what like another five minutes yeah, uh, I, I, ideally, I would have actually put the chili in as well, sort of thing. Um, but okay. <laughs> that's it's it's just going in. A good sample. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good, it's a good practice round. Chili yeah. and the no, the chives going afterwards. I'm guessing. I'm not going to put chives yeah. into the oven. Yeah. How hot are those chilies, do you know? How hot? Mm -hmm. Like a six out of 10, I'd say. Okay, so mild. Okay, yeah, they're not potent. Okay. Let's hope for the best. Is everyone praying for me? I hope they are. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there we have it. So now oh, we've got to wait five minutes. 
By the way, guys, um, let me just bring myself back on camera. Uh, by the way, guys, we actually ran a quick little poll a couple of places online, one in AKR Bukal Rasa, and also one in our Facebook group called Malaysian Street Food Kitchen, which I actually was thinking halfway through whether this broadcast is being streamed to that group at the moment. Do you know if it is, Paul? When you ran the RTMP, would it have automatically gone in there? Um, but in any case, yeah. In any case, um, what we wanted to know is what you would actually like to learn to cook, and the question will help us to be able to first of all decide on what sort of recipes to tackle in these broadcasts. But also, down the track, we want to actually create mini workshops, online mini workshops. To teach you how to cook these things okay so let us know now what you'd like to cook you can comment here and i'll take notes or you can go to malaysian jackie m's malaysian street food kitchen then a joint request to that group there and answer the question there and also um yeah let us know if it's not in the list basically the list right now has things like nyonya kueh it has uh, malaysian hawker food like things like roti chanai like cha kueh tiao like Hanani's um, chicken rice, that's all the famous Malaysian whole food. Or do you want to learn how to make dim sum? Or do you want to learn how to make French pastries and cakes, which may obviously not have anything to do with Malaysia, but one of my Malaysian MOMC at heart chefs is actually a, an excellent patisserie chef who's trained in Paris and who actually supplies his cakes and pastries to all the VIPs in Malaysia. So I think it'd be a good opportunity to learn from him if that's what you want, but we want to hear from you what you would want to learn, okay? So make sure you answer. I, I posted a question in my email as well. So if you are on my mailing list, go and reply and let us know. Um, oh, um, Nick, ah, let's have a look what Nick says. A friend of mine in Malacca makes crispy kwechara. Never heard of that. She pours cooking oil, half of the bahulu mold, similar technique making Yorkshire pudding. Yeah, that is true. And then add batter followed by the curry mm. filling top. Thereafter, the mold is placed on the stove, similar to the Kelantan stove that Chef Jackie visited. Turns out beautiful. There you go, Paul. You need okay. lots of do it. Do it like <laughs> Yorkshire pudding. That's exactly like Yorkshire pudding because I remember yeah. I used to to an Englishman, so I know about Yorkshire puddings a little bit. Uh, I love but, Yorkshire pudding. <laughs> <laughs> so the whole thing with Yorkshire pudding, yeah, the secret is actually you know, Quichara is exactly like Yorkshire pudding. The ingredients are basically the same. She told right. me earlier. Yeah. <laughs> right. No, huh? Yorkshire pudding plus yellow coloring or turmeric. <laughs> yeah. Who'd have it? So, oh, wow. Curry Yorkshire puddings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Malaysian Yorkshire. You know what? We're running a campaign, hopefully in September. Uh, you know, we should ask our our chefs who are involved in that to do Yorkshire pudding with Malaysian like uh, with Malaysian flavors. Because the whole campaign coming up in September is going to be uh, incorporating Malaysian flavors into European dishes. Okay, so Yorkshire, how European can Yorkshire pudding get? How British can Yorkshire pudding get? Is it Malaysian? One hundred and ten percent. Yeah. <laughs> Yorkshire pudding with a Malaysian touch. <laughs> oh, I okay. never thought about it. <laughs> but yeah, guys, yeah, so, I want to learn to cook. Sorry, Paul. Go on. I was going to say, we actually are streaming to AKR, but I okay. noticed that for some reason it wasn't showing up, so I had to go back and reconnect it. So oh, okay. they'll only get the replay. Oh, okay. Oh, what a shame. What a shame. Okay, upper cover somewhere, AKR. <laughs> AKR is one of our partner groups. Uh, obviously, we partner with Mat John, and we also partner with Apakal Rasa, which is run by Katsu and her husband, Amar, and they do baking. Okay, so if you love like amazing like baking stuff, well, the, and the videos is. And yeah. the videos are so satisfying to watch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a baker by any stretch, so. <laughs> but yeah, if you're interested, yeah. Uh, it's, it's, yeah, it's got some pretty amazing baking content there. And there are partners with me, Jackie M, and with Masters of Malaysian Cuisine as well, okay? So sometimes you might see some of their content on our channel. Uh, like I said, beautiful, beautiful cake uh, baking content. Cool. How's your thing going? Let's have a look. 
Yeah, um, I was going to say, you could say Upper Kabar, or as most white people in Malaysia seem to say, <laughs> Salamat Sadatra. <laughs> Salamat Sadatra. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> okay, okay, let's have a look. Is it, is it set, or uh, it looks like... I think so. Be... I think it might be a minute or two. Yeah, it, might, it looks like it just needs a touch longer. Yeah, we'll, we'll use it. Can you, yeah, you can see there. Okay. We'll use this guy as an example. Oh, right. It's quite deep. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. I see what you mean. I'm going to put it in for two it's minutes. If that's on the top, then it'll be set all the way. It must be set, actually, now that you mention it. Okay. Cut it in half. Okay. Take one out. Should, it use, half. should he use a bit more oil? In, especially now that you know we're using the Yorkshire pudding reference, I, I, I have a bit more sense of how to make a Yorkshire pudding. See, uh, there you go. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, sorted. It, it is set through all the way. <coughs> yeah. Okay. Well, then sprinkle the uh, the chives on it. It was meant to be spring onion, but he didn't have spring onion. Garlic chives are. It's actually it's actually meant to be regular. No, no, it's meant to be regular chives, but I've only got garlic chives. <laughs> oh no, no no it's meant to be garlic chives in, in malaysia when we say chives we mean garlic chives sorry i didn't even pay attention to what you were saying before oh is yeah. that is that correct yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. we don't I'm use white chives. <laughs> chives by default are garlic chives then then it's a win-win situation there you go perfect okay let's see how fancy we can play this you know what would actually go well with this is like a sauce to drizzle over it Sure, yeah, yeah. For at least for plating purposes. Sure. Okay, let's, I'm going to pop out like four. I think it'd be good for a photo. Yeah. Sure, sure. Cool. Can you it see me? Yeah, you can. Lighting in your photos, Paul, frustrates me every time. Make sure I get good lighting, yeah. Yeah, get I'm natural take the, in your photos. Yeah, take them out into the, like, you know, when you go outside, take them out onto your car and, and, and take a photo of them from, from your car bonnet. Or better, just uh, take the sleeping bag down from this window here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can do that too. I see a little bit of, okay, that's not gooey. It's just. No, no, it's just the sure. stickiness. Do you have any batter left or? Yeah, quite a bit. Okay. Well. I will repeat process. Mm -hmm. That looks pretty good. Let me just tilt the camera down for you guys. Ta -da. Oh, wait, I'm standing in the light. <laughs> oh, cool. Cool. Yeah, it looks decent. Mm. Oh, promising. Where's that one? I want yeah. it and how it looks. Okay. Okay, it's definitely me... set right. I can't really tell. Uh, yeah, it is. I don't know how to show any better here. Okay. So, cool. yeah, eat it and tell us what it tastes like. Okay, this is my face on camera. Yes. Okay. Tastes like something I've had before. <laughs> it's nice though. It's like a old treat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Does it need more meat in it? I didn't realize how big your molds were. Chunks, yeah. yeah. No, the molds. I thought uh, that. Like, look at the meat too. There is a fair bit. Oh, yeah, no, that's yeah. fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Mm. It does need to go into hot oil though. We will just add a little bit, like depth to the flavor. Yeah, yeah. You can do it for the next batch. Mhm. Mm yeah. See. Yeah. All in all, not bad, well, not bad. All right. Well, there you go, guys. Uh, <laughs> I hope you learned something from Paul's Kwechara today. For those of you who have never tried making Kwechara, have a go at it. Very, very easy, mm -hmm. right? There's flour, eggs, water, and a little bit of yellow uh, coloring, coloring, whether you use turmeric in this case, or you use yellow food coloring, and a bit of seasoning in the batter, and then separately throw in some uh, dry curry mince, usually, but Paul decided mm -hmm. to use. Ostrich. Ostrich. Thank, you, guys. Thank you everyone for tuning in. Uh, my voice has been uh, really scratchy for the last few days. Uh, thank you uh, everyone who said hello and thank you Nick for the suggestion about Yorkshire pudding.
Okay, cool. Uh, don't forget, if you want our recipes, you need to sign up at malaysianchefs.com slash join today. And we will send it out to you once we have everything compiled for this series. And uh, Paul, any last words? Um, I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you learned as much as I learned. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, use yeah, more oil. <laughs> yeah. uh, yeah. I'll see you later. And we'll bump out as usual with Tour of Malaysia. Bye. Ha ha ha!